skip ahead a little bit on our agenda um, as we uh, honor a, a very special young lady. And Mrs. Vance, would you like to? Uh... Absolutely. So we have Kaylee DeSonia here this evening. She is our first female Eagle Scout um, in this area. And so I've invited Kaylee to come up and to share just a little bit about herself and her um, achievements in scouting and just wanted to take the time to honor her. And Kaylee, if you'll introduce your parents as well, I'm sure they're going to take your role in that. Uh, my mom's back there in Amanda. She's in the uh, Class A uniform, and then my dad's behind her. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm thankful to be here tonight. I am uh, a member of the local girls troop in 220, uh, and I'm also the first uh, female uh, to earn Eagle Strength, Eagle Rank in the North Star District of Sacramento Council. Uh, I've been in the scouting program for two and a half years, and I have founded and led this my group um, of amazing girls. Which none of them really kind of show up tonight because they all have something to do. But um, and my Eagle Project was a uh, pollinated house that I built at the uh, Tippecanoe River State Park in Winnipeg. Honored to have you here this evening and in our district as a female leader. So thank you for that. And, and what year are you in school? Uh, I'm in eleven. Okay. Well, that's just congratulations. That's an amazing accomplishment, and we're we're proud of you. And uh, it's even more exciting that you're the first female in the area to get that. So, thank you. well done. Thank you. Kaylee, I know that Mr. Keel and I spoke several times, and he was so sorry that he couldn't be here this evening, but wanted to make sure uh, that you knew that he was thinking about you this evening. Uh, move on to um, consent items and we have three uh, three board meetings that are on the consent agenda one is the July 18th 2022 regular board meeting um, does anyone have any questions or uh, updates on that and the second one is the minutes of the August 9th, 2022 regular meeting. Any questions or comments on that one? Anything from the community? And then the, uh, let's see, third one is approval of the minutes from the August 9th, 2022 study session. That was short and sweet, wasn't it? And then uh, finally, the approval of the executive meeting on August 6, 2022. Any questions or concerns? At this time, I would uh, entertain a motion for uh, to approve these as as uh, presented. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Thank you, Casey. All those in favor? Raise your right hand. And motion passes six to zero. Moving on um, to uh, item E, financial report. Todd, it's your lucky day. Okay. Uh, in the education fund, at the end of July, for July, we had receipts of one million forty-four thousand seven hundred and twenty-two dollars and sixteen cents. Expenses in July of one million two hundred forty-one thousand five hundred thirteen dollars and eighty-three cents. Cash balance at the end of July is six hundred eighteen thousand four hundred one dollars and seventy-seven cents. July was a pretty good month. So, debt service fund. We have receipts of five thousand eight hundred ninety-one dollars and thirty-nine cents. Expenses of one hundred seventy thousand eight hundred fifty-six dollars and thirteen cents. Cash balance in the debt service fund at the end of July is one million two hundred twenty-two thousand two hundred dollars and eighty-five cents. In the operations fund, we have receipts of fifty-six thousand two hundred seventy-seven dollars and fifty-three cents. Expenses of four hundred three thousand eight hundred fifty-eight dollars and forty-five cents. 
cash balance at the end of July, the operations fund is one million three hundred eighty nine thousand six hundred ninety two dollars and forty nine cents. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the community? At this time, I entertain a motion that we accept the um, funds reports as presented. Thank you, Casey. Second. Thank you, Kyle. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. You don't have to vote, Ty. You're welcome to if you want to. I saw your hand go up. I was just doing some papers. All right. And um, claims. Uh, the claims for on this docket are in the amount of one million six hundred ninety-six thousand two hundred seventy-nine dollars and sixty-nine cents. Questions or comments from the board? Would anyone like to? Uh, Move that we approve the claims. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Thank you, Tom. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. And thanks to the Payrolls totaling $768,492. Any questions or concerns from the board? And again, we'll, we'll have a motion on that. So, all in favor? Oh, do I have a second? I'm sorry. I'll second. Jenny, thank you. All those in favor? Motion carries six to zero. And presentation and board consent to advertise 2023 budget. Thank you. So I think that everyone got a binder. Um, we'll to look at briefly on the front of it is a calendar, standard calendar that we've used since before I uh, arrived. There is a <coughs> flexibility in the way it's set up, just so everyone's aware that there are deadlines. So much time because of the public hearings that uh, everything has to be done. So that you gateway by November 1st. Todd, um, can I ask you to move up a little closer? The fan is kind of uh, impeding our sure. Yeah. Making yeah. it harder to hear. <clears throat> well, I can get my outside voice <laughs> going. Your coaching voice. Uh, it's survived since Saturday. Okay. Um, the next page, the next uh, tab is the presentation that kind of I usually work off of, not work off of tonight. Um, it's, the, it's got the yellow PowerPoint. And so um, that first, second page, flip that to the title page, that's just a review. I think that we're almost, I think at this point in time, we're almost done with how the funds have changed. I mean, I think we've done that for long enough, and I think we're used to that now. I thought I'd leave it in here one more year. Um, Another review of the budget calendar. Um, then we get into a little bit of a uh, review of the funds. 2017-2021. Uh, next page gives an idea of what our assessed value has done the last five years um, and where our levies were last year as, as compared to 2021. Uh, levies were $145,000 more last year. Rainy day fund is the next couple of pages, and we are expecting to do anything in that at the moment. Um, when we get to the education fund, uh, this is the most up to date student count we have today, so it's not going to change between now and count day. Um, expecting a little bit more than $12,250,000 uh, revenue from fiscal wealth for the calendar year, excuse me, next year. Um, so that's <coughs> our budget projections off of that revenue um, projection. That service fund, um, 
this one's a little bit different in terms of what we expect to be happening there. That obviously, um, that amount might be a little bit fluid because I kind of inserted numbers on the high side for the debt we're presently talking about um, uh, in the next geo bond that we're talking about this year. So, but that puts us in line similar to what we paid this year. In the operation fund, uh, our AV, the account in the uh, school district's accounts that we have that is, is, is up 13%. So um, I'm expecting our tax revenues to increase uh, substantially because of that. So I, of course, the expenditures are based off of that as well. Next page then is the bus, bus uh, replacement plan. I have talked to Kevin. We still have a bus we haven't received yet this year and last year. I'm not sure what the uh, time frame is, but they're behind. I think uh, supply chain issues is the common uh, excuse, but that makes sense because it seems to be affecting everything that we, we are involved with. In. So um, that's kind of it in a nutshell. I didn't really need to breeze through it. It's kind of hard for me to grasp this because I've done it enough now. It's just like automatic. But, um, Next steps for us would be to give a commission to advertise on Gateway. That's the only place we have to advertise now. We don't have to put the paper. Um, that satisfies statutory requirements. Um, that has to be done. I have to have it posted to Gateway at least 10 days before public hearing, which we would I was hoping to do on September 19th. So there's any, if you would like to do that tonight, of course, I would be happy to if you'd like to wait again. Sessions that still gives us time to have a question as well. So, just a couple um, to go just a little bit deeper in this. As Tom said, we don't have to approve this tonight. If we do approve it, we can still go through, have discussions, make amendments, make changes if necessary. The other important part of this to point out again would be with um, the AB, and I want to thank. Casey for helping us. We were having a difficult time getting um, the AV totals in to complete the budget and reached out and she helped us navigate a little bit better um, to make sure that we had accuracy there and the information there. The hope is with the operation fund, the increase in the uh, AV and what we're able to gain there, we, may, we wouldn't have to make as many transfers from the education fund over into operation, which will help then um, stabilize uh, our education fund. Anything else, Tom? Hi. Any questions for Todd from the board? We've also, I'm sorry, Katie, we also invited Baker Tillian for our study session to talk a little bit deeper about bonds and where we are financially, where we are, kind of do a finance 101 uh, to refresh everybody's memory and to have those discussions, have those conversations. But again, we were waiting on that AV to help guide us uh, down the bond route as well. And so with that information, I think Baker and Tilly can, we're working with them to try to get them to that study session to drill down deeper into what all of this means for Rochester students. So we won't, we won't put you in a bind if we don't vote until the next board meeting? You can, you can, yeah, if you don't vote through the commission, I mean, what we understand it, that's days, so that the 19th, the study session's on the 6th, next meeting is the 19th. Plenty of time. I think I'd like to hear what Baker Tilly has to say myself. What do you guys think? Yeah, I had actually called Jenna and um, kind of talked to Maria and Todd a little bit, and I had meant to do this I don't know, a week and a half ago, I think. I was going to send out an email to the board with a Google Docs on it, and I kind of got to thinking. I had some questions about, like the bonds, where they were at, what projects were on each one just a refresher because budget was coming up and um, I know Kyle Westberger and I were talking and I said you know we really ought to just get a Google Docs where when these thoughts come in my head or in anyone else's we can just add it to that doc so that everyone kind of sees that question as far as you know um, you know with the zebra tech I know that was part of the bond, you know, you know, where do those numbers come in at? Uh, is there anything left in there? Is this the one that's coming up for expiration? You know, I mean, just to try to, you know, I guess, 
be in the know for all of us. And um, so I get thrown that out there. And if you guys don't mind, I'll try to actually get to that this week. And then um, so if you see it in your email, that, that's it. I mean, it's just a, hey, this is information I'd like to see, you know. It's a good idea. I think we do have a gray out that shows the bonds. This is step for one. Yeah, I know that. I just have to dig it out. Yeah. And I think that Trump can bring up a good point in that something bigger so we can bring it back to us and mm -hmm. figure exactly where that helps kind of track and follow up. Thank you, John. You're welcome. All right. Okay. Um, Item F is approval of the consultant's contract for the special services department. So I'll turn this over to Mrs. Uh, Shank to talk about the death and heart of hearing contract. So last year we had a death and heart of hearing licensed teacher on staff, and this year we do not. And we have, I think, seven students that are deaf and hard of hearing um, that need services. So this um, lady that we contracted with is also doing another school in the district so she she is coming one day a week um, up to five hours a day to work with our students is that enough time yeah. for students yes yes a lot of the time is consult with teachers so um, we have one student that's more um, involved that she will work with but most of the other ones their hearing aids and their um, amplification systems are working correctly and troubleshooting with that. Any other questions? I'm familiar with those services. That's a, it's, it's a godsend. Yes. You know, that we can contract for that. It's a big thing. So. And they be, they're very hard to come by. I mean, it's a high incidence facility, <coughs> so there's not very many Um, so I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the consultant contract for uh, special services department. So moved. Thank you, Tom. Second. Thank you, Casey. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes six to zero. Approval of the TAG policy. <clears throat> so the TAG policy is the teacher <coughs> appreciation grant, and it's a process that we have to go through each year. Um, I believe that Mrs. Shally is uh, zooming in, and she and I have had discussions. We would entertain that we continue to keep the status quo, which means those funds that come into us from the state are distributed evenly amongst the teachers who meet the qualifications. So they would have to be highly effective, effective, they would have had to have taught last year in our district and remain in our district this year. There has to be a differential between the highly effective and effective, but this is one of those steps of, in the process to ensure that when those funds arrive, which is typically around the end of October, beginning of November, then that we can uh, turn around and distribute those to the teachers. And it's a necessary step in the process that we have to do. But any questions from the board? Any questions from the community? I would accept the motion to approve the uh, tag policy. Thank you, Kyle. Second. And Casey. All those in favor? Motion passes six to zero. Next, approval of the third reading of policies. Oh, I always love this part. Okay, policy. 221, 2600, 5111, 5340.01. 5,460, 2,370.02, <coughs> policy 8330, policy 6110, policy 5511, policy 6114, and uh, policy 016.3 and 
6325. Again, these were all technical corrections or just language that was um, directed to us to just go ahead and approve those. So, um, this being the third reading, I would entertain a motion to approve those policies. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Kyle. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes 6 to 0. Approval of out-of-state field trip for the Spanish students. So this is a trip, I believe, that has been taken before. It is a Saturday field trip. But the reason that this calls for board approval is we would actually be taking students across the state line to Chicago um, for, for this field trip. So I believe that she is proposing taking 25 students on a Saturday field trip to the museum uh, to learn more about culture and heritage. Is that, is that for all grade levels or is it like third yeah. year? Or Spanish it? one through four in Spanish club, all are invited. Um, the mayors are going on Saturdays to help transportation because we couldn't get back in time for transportation to run the routes. Okay. So she has for Saturday. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the audience? I will accept the motion this time to approve the uh, out-of-state field trip for Spanish classes. Mm -hmm. Casey and Jenny. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes six to zero. Student and stakeholder focus, donations. Um, you haven't had any changes since like Two o'clock. Good job. Okay. Um, always, uh, always <coughs> grateful for the community um, and the area. Uh, some of these, this is from far and wide sometimes, and near, near as well. But uh, RHS 2022 FFA program received two hundred fifty dollars from the Andersons Incorporated. Real Elementary received two hundred fifty dollars from One School One Book from the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. RHS 2022-2023 cheerleaders, uh, $500 for new signs and uniforms from the Rochester Telephone Company. Real Elementary, $2,400 Anthem Support Kids Fit 5K from Cabello Associates Incorporated. That's us. RCSC, $169.59 for student needs from Kroger Card Participants. Columbia Elementary, high chair and stroller for the daycare room from the Boys family. Columbia Elementary, a rocking chair from the Dalton family. Columbia Elementary, backpack lights from First Source Bank. And Riddle, Riddle Elementary, backpack lights for First Source Bank. I love that they're doing that. That's a great thing. I've seen lots of stuff about it over the years online, and it's, I'm glad it's here, and especially for uh, the dark mornings that will be coming before we know it. So, um, grateful for all those donations. Any questions from the board? Questions or comments from the community? And I will accept the motion. So, Casey? Second. And Tom? All those in favor? The motion carries six to zero. report and that hasn't changed since three o'clock either has it that's amazing okay I'm always, I'm always reluctant to print it out uh, the following personnel um, report is up for us to uh, vote on today and recommendations from Columbia Elementary Linda Sanders as an instructional assistant at an hourly rate of twelve dollars Mia Overmeyer Mia or Maya I'm sorry Mia. thank you Daycare assistant, $12.51 an hour. Tammy Jurgen, special needs instructional assistant, hourly rate, $12.59. Mary Ryder, instructional assistant, hourly rate, $12. Uh, Riddle, Angie Obermeyer, special needs instructional assistant, at rate of $15.43. Recommendations from the middle school. Eric Davis, removal as RMS CIA position, 
due to transfer to R RHS. CIA positions at RMS to be awarded a stipend change to $2,250. Request for RMS Friday school position paying annual stipend of $1,000. Tanya Parker, food service assistant, hourly rate of $1,358. Rochester High School. Megan Allen, RHS music choir stipend $1,825. Lucy Hernandez, RHS Spanish Club, stipend $365. Jennifer Snyder, RHS FCCLA, stipend $352.50. Sarah Masterson, RHS FCCLA, stipend $352.50. Val Hoover, Junior Claps, stipend $161. Hope Shally, Junior Class, $161. Lauren Friend, Senior Class, $182.50. Val Hoover, Senior Class, Stipend, $182.50. Lisa McMillan, Auditorium Manager, Stipend, $1,035. Recommendations from RHS Athletics, Noah Swango, Volunteer Coach, Wrestling Program for 2022-2023. Marshall Fishback, Volunteer Coach, Wrestling Program for 2022-2023. Wade Schaefer, Volunteer Coach, Wrestling Program for 2022-2023. Jacob Schroeder, Volunteer Wrestling Coach, Program for 2022-2023. Questions or comments about the personnel report? Anyone in the community have any questions or comments? And I will entertain a motion to approve that. Thanks, Jenny. Okay. And Casey. All those in favor? Motion carries six to zero. And we have superintendent's business. So I'll we'll go through each of the buildings and ask uh, our principals to report out on successes um, since the start of the school year what's happening behind the scenes that you're working on and uh, what we can do to support you in those behind the scenes endeavors and on a day-to-day -day basis. So Oscar, we'll start with you and work our way through the buildings uh, from high school to Columbia. All right, so the other night we had junior, senior parent night. We had a pretty good turnout for that. They got to learn about some of the scholarship opportunities and the FAFSA and all the exciting things that the junior and senior parents need. Um, our new, new business program is off the ground and running. Uh, we got a lot of kids in that throughout the day. Um, they're starting to do some good things in there and starting to promote some of the things to the school along with their curriculum. Uh, Mr. Lau's program that's in this building now over there, that new setup is working out really well. I'm still working with some business partners there to kind of uh, grow that as well. Um, we have an internship program that's becoming, uh, I don't know if I want to say renowned or well known around the state because uh, we have almost 50% of our seniors are in an internship in our community, which is a huge support from our community. It's a big uh, prop to Mrs. Snyder for that. Um, we have people calling us at least weekly asking us how we already have that in place because that's a big push with the pathways from the state. So I appreciate her work there. Uh, I want to thank you guys for allowing me to put my handbook, no backpacks. That has went really smooth. The students have really cooperated with that. Now when I go into our double classrooms, it feels like they're like twice the size. You can actually walk around the room and so forth. So I know our teachers really appreciate that. Um, the students have done a great job with that. Uh, something I really want to brag on is Mrs. Duranilo and our band. Um, she's really starting to expand that program. She added Color Guard this year. Um, if you know what Color Guard is, it's the young ladies that are throwing the flags, could be young men too. Um, but her and Mrs. Allen, our new choir director, are looking to start a band boosters. Community, if you hear that, they're looking to start a band boosters. Awesome. So please um, look to join that. I know I was at a wedding on Saturday and stopped, talked to a few of the graduates and uh, some of the parents in the community and they're really excited about that. So uh, something to look forward that we'll need community support on when it comes to that. And then um, something that's really neat that's just inside the building, our culinary arts program that was new last year um, has kind of taken off and She's really implemented our uh, special ed students into that, and they've taken over ordering all of our concessions in the building, which is 
took a huge lift off of uh, some of what Mr. Rini and Mr. Martz have going on. Mr. Martz still helps oversee it, but they're doing a phenomenal job and learning some math skills and some things like that with those programs. What we have coming up on September 1st, we have ASVAB, which is the military exam. Um, everybody takes it because if you get a certain score on it, then that helps us get you across the stage. Um, September 2nd, that's a big night for us. Um, we have the 87 state champ reunion. Coach Miller's coming back. We've confirmed that. Um, so we're hoping that that message is out there. Um, that's going to be a big deal. That's the same night that we're also recognizing Marshall Fishback. His ring has come in. He and Coach Guard uh, will get them down there on the track and recognize them as well. Um, that's homecoming, which means FFA um, pork chop dinner, which is a big hit. So we're excited about that. Then uh, something that just came through today on September 23rd, which is another home football game, um, the class of 2002 from Caston reached out, and they uh, reached out due to the fact that um, that was the class, I believe, that our student who had the medical emergency at, there on that Friday morning, his dad graduated with. They're going to do a hog roast for a free will donation on September 23rd. That's also youth football night. It's what. Coach Schaefer also uses for teacher appreciation night, which is kind of funny because that's when all the teachers try and squeeze into the football jerseys that the kids give them. But um, so that'll be a big night for us, supporting that Strasser family. Before I sit down, I want to thank the community, thank our teachers, um, thank the school board for that support. I was able to go and deposit a pretty significant um, set of checks and cash into the Strasser family's bank account uh, last Friday. So I appreciate that support from the community. Um, they're going to continue to need that. There's good, there's good reports coming out of Indianapolis still from Andy and Linnea, and they just appreciate your thoughts and prayers. So hopefully it sounds like Drew might be able to come home here at the end of the VPN next week. That's where we are. Thank you. Oh, any questions? <coughs> Sorry. All right. Well, the middle school, we start off the year with a bang. We had um, Kona Ice come in for our PBIS day for the first day back. Um, so that was well received, not only by kiddos, but by staff, because that day was um, hot. So it was nice having the flavored ice truck there. Kids had fun at the park and other things that we did. Um, we had our first um, dance under our belt, and I think there was 95% attendance to that. That was really nice seeing the kids um, kind of get back in the swing of things and enjoy themselves and do some karaoke, um, a little bit of sing-along karaoke in the gym with some teachers and you know just having that, um, building those relationships with those kiddos in different aspects other than the classroom. <clears throat> Something we're working on um, with the high school is the Woods class over there at the high school is going to build us another Gaga pit. Um, it's something that is, um, coming in last year it's needed because of the amount of kids that want to play but whenever um, I restrict it to 15 because of the amount of numbers so that we don't get injured this other pit will help out and it's nice to rely on a program like the high school has to help you know build that for our school corporation so that's kind of excited um, we did put up another um, oh it's called nine square and um, it is another playground equipment that's up and running and the, the kids love it and that helped us with numbers of you know getting more kids acclimated and activity or getting an, into an activity instead of just sitting off to the side and waiting on another game to play so that was nice to see we got through nwa testing um just tonight there's our first volleyball games going on uh, the athletic boosters that supplied um, half of the $10,000 volleyball equipment that's up and running and it looks nice and it's nice to hear from previous um, reps that have came in saying how nice things look so um, again it's a community that gives back and that's greatly appreciated. Um, things coming up, um, probably another dance, I know they have like a costume dance last year around Halloween time, um, hitting some of that curriculum stuff that we're doing starting to um, do a deeper dive into math and English especially and utilizing uh, the teachers that we have in those areas to do pull out and push in and um, just try to get a boost on some of those I learned numbers that we've got. Okay. Thank 
at Riddle, the first few weeks of school have gone very, very well. So our kids all learning the routines and things like that. So that's nice. Um, getting all of our kind of our benchmarking done. That's what we do at the, the elementary, testing our kids with the NWEA, as Lucas mentioned. Also within our reading curriculum, math curriculum, just to see where they're at, so we can get them in their title services and things that they need to be in. So. All of that's just about ready to lift off here in the next week or so. We'll have all our title groups and all that mapped out and figured out, so that'll be good. Uh, upcoming, we've got picture day on Thursday, and I uh, just appreciate the board's support. Very similar to Luke's uh, at Columbia. We've had a really good uh, start to the year. Um, open house went really well. We had a huge turnout for that. Uh, our daycare is up and, and rolling, um, and the, the ladies that are in there are doing a fantastic job. Uh, parents are adjusting to bringing the kids in, and, and uh, it's really really been a, a neat thing to see. Although I panic quite often when I hear those poor, those kids, because it's just not noises that I'm used to hearing <laughs> down in my office, you know? So, I mean, I don't panic, I mean, don't get me wrong. They just, they just like to cry and scream out a little bit. Uh, um, but anyways, uh, so we're doing the same thing. Uh, really, the, the primary focus um, for the first month of school for us is relationships. Um, we try to develop the relationships with the kids and the parents. Um, it's a focus that I have my staff uh, really working on. Um, communicating with parents early on, establishing those relationships with them, uh, I think always uh, helps on down the road if there become any hiccups throughout the year. So that's really been our primary focus to get the year off. We don't have a lot of events scheduled right now. Uh, like uh, Luke said, you know, trying to get the routines down and the protocols and uh, they're doing fantastic. Uh, being able to have the preschool working uh, or eating in the cafeteria last year uh, has made um, our lunch operations go very smooth because the kids have now eaten there for a year in pre-K. You wouldn't think it, but I mean, two or three years ago, our kindergarten were still eating in classrooms. So you know, now that we've got everybody eating in the cafeteria and it going real smooth, lunch is a whole different ball game in, in the building right now. So that's been good. So relationships is our focus. Um, things we've got coming up, we've got several field trips coming up. Uh, kindergarten's got a field trip going to um, Wabash Honeywell Center for a, a show coming up here in a little bit. And then um, we're finally gonna get back to McClure's Orchard with our first grade kiddos. And uh, so those are a couple that we've got, got going. So we appreciate uh, the support and uh, we've had a real good start. Car lines are looking a-okay. I think Skeeter, right? Still looking good? Well, so there you go. I'd like to um, actually kind of say, I'm not sure who is taking like all the Facebook pictures and videos for all the schools, but um, I don't know if you understand the impact of that, but I have heard so many good comments on that and so many people saying that they just love it. They love to see, um, and I know it's part of the marketing plan, or kudos, you know, to everybody for putting that forth. I know you're so busy and that's just one more thing to think of is posting whatever you have on your phone to pay Facebook, but it really is making a difference. I've heard a lot of people say they just love seeing the pictures and love seeing you know, the activities and the kids and, and all of that. And, so, and, and the letters from parents as well, or from the teachers as well, the beginning of the school year. Um, I've heard a lot of, of very good comments about that. And as a parent, I can say, I liked it. You know, I really enjoyed that too, because um, there were teachers I didn't know. And um, so it was just really nice to be able to hear from them and see what was going on. So thank you very much for putting that effort in. Thank you to everybody. It's a problem team, and we work hard. And tomorrow morning, we start our day with uh, the principals, uh, the directors of each um, department, and have a large group to continue that communication and, and be successful and continue to move those things out. So, I do appreciate your support and your efforts as well. Anything else, Jim? Thank you. Um, I appreciate all of you being here this evening, and uh, if we uh, don't have any more um, items for discussion. Then uh, anybody? Comments, questions, complaints? The complaint department is about three miles down. Uh,
Um, it was open yesterday. It was open yesterday. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, then we are adjourned. Thank you all so much for taking the time to see me. Made it. You did it. <laughs>